LTM podcast powered by Slipstream Autosports. My name is Daniel and welcome to a bit of a different video or pod wherever you're watching and listening from. Um, this is going to be my predictions of the uh, of how the silly season is going to fold and how the 2025 grid is uh, going to look. And I got this suggestion from a longtime viewer, um, Jordan. Uh, so thanks, Jordan. Appreciate it, mate. I know you're listening right now. Um, thanks for that. Appreciate it. And uh, with that being said, let's just dive straight into the meatiness of this of this video. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Starting off with the current team leaders, Red Bull Ampole Racing. Uh, I highly reckon Will Brown and Brock Feeney is safely there for next year. Of course, they've got contracts till the end of next year and the year after, as far as I'm aware. But keep in mind, by the way, as I go through this video, um, keep in mind, contracts sometimes mean nothing. We've seen the likes of, for example... Um, Shane, um, Shane Van Gisbergen, uh, leaving Naz, leaving to NASCAR, um, after having a contract till the end of this year, at least he left early, um, and the whole Erebus debacle, let's not get into that. Um, but yeah, that's just an example, but, uh, so yeah, take everything with a grain of salt, but yeah, in terms of Red Bull, I don't think they'll change. We might see a number one on one of those cars next year. Um, as we've been saying throughout the year in our podcast, we reckon Will Brown will most likely get that number one. However, um, it's only, I think, 78 points or so now, the gap between the two as they head into Sydney Motorsport Park this weekend. So it's going to be very interesting to see. We've still got heaps of racing left for uh, Brock Feeney to close that gap. Um, but definitely keep an eye out for Chas Moster in Walkinshaw and Dreddy United. Um, as you know, they're third at the moment there, chasing them down. They had a fantastic weekend in Townsville. In terms of their 2025 grid, I reckon it's going to be Chas Moster and Ryan Wood. They both, I believe, have contracts as well locked in. Um, Ryan Wood's been doing a sensational job as a rookie this year. Uh, he had a rough start with no points at Bathurst, but he's definitely um, shown some promising results, especially being in the top 10 a couple of times. Um, definitely a fast kid, that's for sure. Chas Moster as well, he's obviously really, really good, really quick. Um, we all know how good he is behind that wheel. And uh, with Walker Shaw now getting, getting a, um, a better understanding of that Mustang, unfortunately, like I said, last year, uh, their first year in the Ford Mobile, they didn't do quite well. Um, but this year they've been doing literally the opposite. So hopefully maybe next year they will be a weapon, see what happens. Um, then we got Penwright Racing or Grove Racing, Matt Payne and Richie Stanaway. I think they're locked in as well. I don't think that's going to change anyway. Um, they've both been doing very well. Richie hasn't been doing as well as we hoped, whereas Matt Payne has been uh, in the uh, last recent rounds anyway. Although they ha there has been some um, outstanding performances from both of them. Obviously, Richie Stanaway um, did very well at round one at back in Bathurst. I believe he was fourth by the end of that one. Uh, yeah, I reckon they're going to be a dark horse again. Um, definitely a team to beat as well, as they proved in uh, Townsville uh, with that amazing Sunday performance um, to get them eight seconds into the lead. Fantastic. Um, so definitely don't discount them. They could be a weapon, obviously. You know, it's Richie's first year in that Mustang. Next year, he's probably going to be a lot better. That's for sure. I can see that happening. But we, like I said, we've still got the rest of this year to go. So anything can happen. Um, but definitely don't don't discount those boys there. Next up is Matt Stone Racing. Uh, Nick Perkat, obviously, he's been announced uh, as a driver till the end of 2027, uh, which I believe is the longest contract so far in supercars anyway. Uh, so he looks really happy there. Um, I don't think he'll be he was going to change anyway. Um, he's quite safe there. And Cam Hill, another one. Um, he's been doing very well. This is his second year in the main game. He's been doing a sensational job so far. A few top tens here and there. Um, he, he looks quite happy and comfortable in that car as well. Uh, Matt Stone Racing is definitely going places, that's for, that's for sure. Um, next up is Blanchard Racing with James Courtney and Aaron Love. I believe they both have multi-year deals, so uh, next year is the end of their contracts. Um, 
Obviously, tough start to the season for Aaron Love, but he's still getting his, his head around the car. Uh, James Courtney has shown some promising results. They just need the car behind him. But uh, no, they look quite happy and content where they are at the moment. Don't think anything of that will change. And now we head into uh, Tickford Racing, which is sort of where it could potentially change. So first off, uh, Thomas Randall. Obviously, I believe it will be locked in for next year. He's got the contract. I think I think both Cam Waters and Randall have contracts till the end of next year at least. Uh, but Randall's, I can safe say that he'll be there no matter what next year. Um, he's been very, very promising this year. And ever since he joined the main game, he's been quite uh, promising lately. Um, especially Townsville. They've, Like I said, Tickford just came alive. In the, If you saw our uh, review, you would notice what we said about that. Um, Tickford's just come alive. This is where we expected them to be once they dropped from four cars to two. Um, they've had a rough start this season, but hopefully their luck is turning around. And I'm excited to see how they go in uh, Sydney this week as well. Of course, Thomas Randall went to UK, do some training, went to a wedding. Um, so he might be refreshed and ready to rock and roll uh, in Sydney. Uh, Cam Woods, though, um, he did say he's locked in for next year. He's committed to racing for Tickford and Monster Energy. However, uh, you know, a deal there could, like a Shane Van Giesbergen, there could be a potential chance he just ends up shifting to NASCAR next year. Who knows? He has said that he won't be, but, you know, that he probably said that because there hasn't been a deal or anything like that. Who knows what happens behind the scenes? But if he does, right, if he does, this is where the silly season begins. If he does end up going to NASCAR full time next year, um, I reckon Brad Vaughan can hop in that car, I reckon. Um, now, I was intrigued whether it could be Brad Vaughan or Anton Di Pasquale, which I'll get into soon, but I reckon if, if Anton gets into that car, it will sort of be like a Red Bull RB situation where it sort of destroys the, the, the fact that a Tickford Academy exists with Tickford Autosports. Um, so I reckon Brad Vaughan it will probably be the next step up for that team. Um, he has what it takes, in, in my opinion. He, of course, won the Super 3 Championship against Kai Allen in 2022. Uh, he had a rough Townsville, unfortunately, but he's definitely got the car pace behind him. He's definitely been one of the front runners in the Super 2 category for the last couple of years. Um, so I reckon, no doubt, he could potentially take Cam Waters' place. Um, obviously, we've got Lockie Dalton as well, and uh, Gray as well there. Uh, although Lockie, he's obviously doing his wildcard main game debut uh, at Sydney this weekend, which is going to be very exciting. I'm very excited to see how he does in the number five car. Um, but I reckon Brad Vaughan most likely be the one there. But in saying that, Cam Waters will most likely stay. Next up, speaking of Anton Di Pasquale, Shell V Power Racing. Um, so I've written here Kai Allen. Um, obviously, he won the Super Three, Super 2 Championship in 23. Um, he almost won the championship in 22 for Super 3, but lost it on the last race. Um, and he's on his set to win again, um, which is has not, never been done before. He'll be the first ever driver, if he can do it, he'll be the first ever driver to win back-to-back -back in Super 2. Um, of course, we've seen the likes of Paul Dumbrell and whatnot win multiple championships in Super 2, but never back-to-back. -back. So that'll be very exciting to see. And he seriously deserves a main game seat. Of course, he'll be co-driving, I think, Will, Will Davison this year, uh, which is a fantastic uh, pairing, in my opinion. Uh, the the uh, ex very experienced Will and the rookie up-and-comer, up Kai. And speaking of that, I've put down Will Davison as his teammate for next year. And the reason I've done that is I've looked at the championship standings from this year because both Anton... What was that voice break? My goodness me, I apologize. Anyone who's, especially on Spotify, um, please don't leave. Um, <laughs> um, I've said... I've looked at the championship standings because both Will and Anton are out of contract at the end of this year. Um, so they're both at risk. And both don't seem like they're ready to step down yet, especially Will Davison. Uh, who's actually currently 7th in the championship standings, compared to Anton, who is 14th. Of course, he's had a rough year with mechanical issues and electrical issues, but in terms of pace, Will Davison has been doing rather well lately, especially Townsville. He he was definitely a, 
a, uh, a star for sure. Unfortunately, that race pace wasn't there, but that qualifying one lap pace was ideal. I reckon he'll be safe. He'll probably be ending up staying there next year, um, helping Kai Allen with his main game debut. I can see that happening. The old dog with the new dog sort of thing, similar to what we see with uh, Blanchard Racing with Courtney and Love. I can see that sort of dynamic go to Dick Johnson Racing um, to basically help Kai um, get confident with a main game drive and hopefully, you know, get a championship win and stuff like that. He could be the next Scott McLaughlin. Who knows? Um, but uh, no, I, I reckon that will most likely be the case. Of course, DJR have, a, I think, apparently hinted at it maybe running a Super 2 team, and I hope Kai Allen does not go there next year. I hope he needs a main game seat, but if he doesn't go to get a main game seat, then certainly groom him in the Super 2 seat for DJR. I don't know if that was the right word, but just roll with it, all right? Um, speaking of, as I said, Anton, Team 18. Uh, this is rather interesting. Both Mark Winterbottom and David Reynolds are not safe, I believe. As far as I'm aware, they both have their contracts end this year. Mark Winterbottom has, in terms of championship, they're about 12th and 4, 15th or something like that. They're very close to each other, and Anton as well. And that's why I put down Mark Winterbottom. I reckon he will most likely stay, maybe. I know everyone's saying, you know, the old dogs need to retire. It's time to give young blokes a go. But they obviously don't want to. And they're obviously showing promising pace and stuff like that. Um, like I said, with Will Davison, he's no, he's not ready to back down. And neither I don't, uh, and neither is Mark Winterbottom. Um, and David Reynolds, like I've written multiple options here for Team Eighteen because I can most likely, realistically, <clears throat> see uh, Mark Winterbottom and David Reynolds staying. Uh, at Team 18 for next year. I can most likely see that. That's the most realis realistic option for me. Um, to spice things up, I reckon Mark Winterbottom and Anton Di Pasquale, he might move from Shell to Team 18, switching Mustang to Camaro. That'll be interesting to see how Anton goes. Because obviously, like I said, all three of them are actually near each other, next to each other on the championship standings. And I've written here, because I'll get into it in a minute, if Brad Jones Racing goes from four cars to two, which also is a wild, a wild thing, um, but most likely won't happen, um, I could see Reynolds and Heimgartner. That could spice things up. I've, I've literally, I couldn't, basically, in other words, I couldn't make a simple decision. Now, I didn't want to seem boring just saying Winterbottom and Reynolds, uh, so I wanted to spice a couple scenarios up there. And let, you know what? Let's talk about Brad Jones Racing while we're here. Um, so let's start off with if they run a four-car team for next year, which is, again, most likely the case. Um, Andre Heimgartner locked in. He's obviously the fastest BJR driver there is at the moment. Um, Macaulay Jones will stay where he is. I mean, he has to. He's Jones, of course. Um, I'll doubt, see, he's like the Lance Stroll of supercars at the moment, except he's a bit more friendlier. Um, and Jackson Evans, he's definitely a up and comer in terms of pace wise. He's, he's getting pretty close to Andre's pace in that car there. Now I've written here either Bryce Fullwood or Declan Fraser, because of course Declan is now uh, a co-driver for, um, Andre this year. Uh, and Bryce Fullwood, he hasn't, he's been, he's actually this year to be fair, he has been the second and third fastest driver of the team. Um, but he just hasn't been very promising since he's joined the main game, unfortunately. I I know, you know, I have to be bold and I have to be quite uh, crucial here. Um, that's probably not the right, critical, one of the words. You know what I mean. Um, he simply hasn't performed as well as we all hoped uh, ever since he joined Walkinshaw, uh, I think 20, was it 2019 he joined. I think 2019 he joined, I believe, um, or 2020. No, 2020, I believe. 2020, he locked, he joined, because um, obviously he dominated the Super Two season and won that when he when he was in there. Um, but he just hasn't shown that pace uh, in supercars, at least in the main game. Um, but keep in mind, he's got the middies backing as well, um, so that sponsorship dollars might be the reason he's still there. I don't mean that in a mean way. I'm just meaning because BJR obviously have four cars. Uh, Evans has the SCT, SCT Logistics sponsorship money, um, obviously. Um, so, well, originally it was Jack Smith, of course, the, the GOAT. Um, he could make a return. Who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I reckon it will most likely 
see, it'll most likely be Heimgartner forward Jones Smith, um, Evans. Almost said Smith there. But if Fraser was to go there, I reckon he would take the number 14, I reckon, in my opinion. Uh, now, as I said before, if Brad Jones Racing happened to drop the four cars down to two, which in my opinion is the most logistical way um, and probably the better way for them moving forward if they're looking at being competitive because we've seen what it's done to Tickford and Walkinshaw. Um, remember back when they had four cars, they dropped down to two. Um, and it's just been... Sorry, they had three cars. Uh, and and basically what I'm trying to say is their pace has sensationally improved um, because obviously Tickford um, now can focus on the two main cars instead of having to worry about the two other ones and also the cost on top of that as well. This sport is not cheap. So to save money and to actually be quicker at doing it, I reckon Brad Jones Racing should drop down to two, but it's rarely likely that they will. Um, plus it gives the um, the wreck or the charter, whatever you want to call it, to someone else to maybe a brand new team. Um, maybe Peter Adderton, who knows? Anyone who wants to join Supercars, it will give them the option. Um, but if they drop down to two, um, I've, like I said, I've written, uh, oh, sorry, on team 18, I've written Reynolds and Heimgartner, um, because it's back to what I said. It's hard. I doubt that Macaulay Jones will leave Brad Jones racing, given that he, he's the son of Brad, um, and Declan Fraser, of course he is, you know, co-driving Andre. Uh, he's definitely sh showed a lot of promise in super two with triple eight. Uh, he had a rough Tickford year, unfortunately. Like I said, that whole four-card debacle just never works. Uh, so he had a really tough season. So for him to maybe be in a Brad Jones car again, that'll be as a full-time squad, that'll be fantastic. Because you know that the Brad Jones has promise, right? That car can be quick. Uh, it's just I feel like they just need to drop down to two. Uh, I don't know what goes up behind the scenes, but I reckon that should be the case. Um, and yeah, like I said, Andre, you know, he deserves to still be in the game. Um, so I reckon Team 18 should be where he ends up. Now, let's move on to... How many have we got? Let's go to... We've only got two more. Uh, Erebus. Erebus Motorsport, if they're still around next year. Who knows? Because obviously the whole selling debacle app is going on at the moment. Um, and if you don't know about that, by the way, Aaron Hickman was originally going to buy the buy the team, the owner of Velo. Um, he's walked away from a deal. So Erebus is still on the market. Um, quietly on the market. Who knows? We haven't heard much about it. Um, but if, let's just say they have a two-car team next year, because, you know, who knows if they get bought out by TFH, for example, they might move down to one car. Who knows? I don't know the full story. No, neither does anyone else. But uh, if they do two cars, uh, Jack LeBrock, I, I reckon he has a... Let's have a look here. I think he had a multi-year deal anyway. Um... Yeah, he has an end of 2025, I've written here. So he's safe and secured there at Erebus. Uh, he's done very well this year. Of course, he scored his first pole for the team in Townsville. Uh, and he showed a lot of promise, actually, that weekend overall. Um, and I reckon his teammate will be Jack Smith. No, I'm just kidding. It will most likely be um, Todd Hazelwood. All right. So obviously, Todd is co-driving for Brody this year. He subbed in for the last, first two rounds of the year as well. Um, now, people are saying Job Stewart maybe as well because he's part of the academy and Barry Ryan wants that. But I personally don't think Job will be ready just yet for a main game C. I don't think he it will be ready for that pressure just yet. Um, he has not had even a co-drive yet. Um, nothing against Job. He's a fast up-and-comer. Uh, he did very, very well in Super 3. Um I think he won the championship last year, um, and he moved, obviously moved up to Super 2 this year. I reckon just let him cook a little bit longer. Uh, maybe we could see him in 26, who knows. But uh, I reckon for now, put Todd Hazelwood in that car. He obviously has proven he can give Erebus those results on par with Jack LeBrock. They're quite similar in pace-wise. So if you, know, you want to stay in the top 10, top 5, put Jack and Todd in that car. Of course, they're currently eighth in the standings at the moment. Uh, they've had a rough season with Brody, uh, with mechanical dramas and just, I don't know what's happening there. But Jack has been doing very well so far. So if, to put someone similar Jack in that car next year is probably a better choice in my opinion and let Job in the car next, next year. 
Um, cause you know, he, like I said, he's a bright upper comer, but just let him cook a little bit longer. Like Kimmy Antonelli. And, uh, last but not least, that brings me on to Nulon racing or premier racing. Uh, James Golding will most likely stay there. Um, He's been doing very, very well. Of course, he scored his first pole position for the team and for himself um, in Darwin this year, which was fantastic. Um, and his teammate um, will not be Tim Slade, in my opinion. Uh, Tim has been nowhere near James this week, this year, unfortunately, as much as I like Tim. He just hasn't simply been performing well enough. Uh, I reckon his teammate will be, drum roll please, <laughs> Brody Kostecki, I reckon he, this has been a very popular opinion amongst the supercar community. Um, he most likely will end up at Nulon Racing if he doesn't end up in NASCAR, um, which I can see this, a a, a, um, a breeze of, fr a fresh, what's a, what's the saying? A breath of fresh air. Um, I don't know why it took me so long to say that. Uh, for Brody Kostecki, uh, I reckon that this will see him mentally be even happier than he is now. Unfortunately, of course, the whole Erebus debacle was sort of made a left a mark. But obviously, uh, we have set we have we have actually mentioned this in the podcast uh, before because obviously we do our live podcast. For example, we do our live podcast tonight for our Sydney preview uh, at seven thirty p.m. Uh, roughly um, Adelaide time, so that's eight p.m. Eastern. Um, so if you want to head on down there to TikTok and YouTube. Of course, it's live, so you can ask questions and whatnot and be featured in the pod. And then um, we do a cheeky Q&A at the end as well over on TikTok. Um, cheeky plug, back to the action. Um, yeah, as I said on the live, uh, Brody Kostecki, you know, most likely will go to Premier Racing, no doubt. Um, obviously, he will have that whole Erebus drama follow him anywhere he goes, whether it's NASCAR or here. Um, who knows? Um, but I reckon this will be the best option for him, of course, um, Nulon works very closely, or Premier uh, Racing works very closely with Triple Eight. Uh, of course, before the Gen Three cars, um, they actually, you know, were a they actually built their cars at Triple Eight, I think, from memory. Um, so yeah, so I could see a very, and who knows, this could be potentially a link to maybe ending up at Triple Eight at some some point. Uh, in the next couple of years, who knows, see what happens. But uh, now I reckon this will be a fantastic opportunity for him and Nulon. Imagine him with um, teaming up with Ludo. That will be a dangerous weapon, in my opinion. Of course, we've seen how good James is. Um, but imagine how good Brody will be if they've got uh, in that car. Because that car has shown promise this year. And I'm very, very excited if that happens. Uh, and... Yeah, it's going to be exciting. But uh, I believe that is all of the teams this year that I've mentioned. Um, so it's, I'm very excited to see how close I am to the to how it folds. Of course, um, we'll be keeping everyone up to date on YouTube and TikTok uh, whenever we get a new uh, driver news sort of thing or just any supercar news in general. Just go follow our TikTok and stuff like that and YouTube as well. Subscribe if you haven't. Click the ding dong bell. Also to be notified whenever we upload as well, because we up, we upload regularly nowadays. Now that we've got Radio Italiana, we post all our show, because um, obviously Radio Italiana, we make a one hour show, well, ish, one hour ish show on uh, the Adelaide Radio Network. Uh, and then we actually upload that to our Spotify and then chop it up in segments for our YouTube, which is what you see uh, daily. So it, it's a good good excuse to post content daily. So there you go. Uh, of course, we cover IndyCar uh, MotoGP, Formula One, NASCAR, and Indi I've said IndyCar already, uh, Formula E as well. And uh, this week, especially, we've been covering the Australian Superbikes. We've also got a couple of interviews along the way. Uh, we also had one recently with Brock Payne as well, so check that out if you want. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below your predictions for the 2025 grid. Now, keep in mind, guys, of course, this is opinion-based. It is purely my opinion, purely a prediction, so it's not final. If you do disagree with it, um, do let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts as to why you think it's wrong. Um, and without, you know, going like, oh, you, you, your potato, or you, you just, you don't need to get abusive. Just let me know your opinions. And if I'm wrong, tell me why. I would love to hear, start a conversation with you guys about this. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. And uh, yeah, 
it, it's going to be exciting for sure. Of course, we've got the next couple of rounds left. We've got, uh, of course, Sydney this weekend. We've got Tassie. And then we've got the Enduro, Sandown, Bathurst. And then we've got Gold Coast and then Adelaide. So we've only got a few rounds left, but uh, a few of those I quite like. Actually, I like all these tracks, to be honest. Um, so it's going to be sick for sure. Um, and obviously, like I said, subscribe, follow. Follow our socials if you haven't yet. All of the links that you need is in the show notes and description below. If you're on Spotify, be sure to give us a five-star rating. Helps us branch out more. And subscribe on YouTube if you haven't yet. We're trying to get to 1K. We're currently up to 722, so we're getting very close. Um, and, uh, yeah, follow our socials, of course, to stay up to date with everything we do. Um, and, of course, we've got a couple events coming up as well, so be sure to tune in and stay up to date for that as well. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to stop talking now. Thanks, everyone, who's tuned in. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend and hope to see you all tonight for our Repco Supercars Sydney preview. Bye for now.